You're watching Spirit and Truth Ministries on YLC TV with Mark Moore Jr. Your strength, healing, and empowerment starts now. Now, y'all, come on. That's an applause. It becomes a praise when you open your mouth. Come on. Can somebody give him praise like from the rising of the sun to the setting of the same? Our God is worthy. Come on. If you're glad that you made it, if you're glad that you survived what was supposed to take you out, I need you to praise him right here. If you're glad you survived what caused other folk to throw the towel in, I need you to praise him right now. If God has ever made a way for you, I need you to open up your mouth and make sure your neighbors know you got a testimony today that if it had not been for the Lord that was on your side, come on, somebody open your mouth and give God a praise. Yeah, come on, before you sit down, just tell your neighbors, and neighbor, this is praise row right, right here. Yeah, I, 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 I don't know what you had to fight through to get here. I don't know. What's waiting on you back at home? But tell them, say, neighbor, this is praise road. Everything on this road got to give God glory. Everything on this. Yeah. God bless you. Be seated in the presence of the Lord. We honor him today. Some trust in horses. Some trust in chariots. But we will remember the name of the Lord. And somebody has that testimony that the name of the Lord is a strong tower. And the righteous running in, and they are saved. Is anybody glad that you know the name of the Lord today? Hallelujah. We honor God for just another opportunity to be in the house of the Lord. And certainly we give God great praise for the angel of this house, for our pastor. Would you all help me just shake this cathedral with appreciation for the one and only Dr. E. Dewey Smith Jr. Y'all ain't shouting good. I need somebody to help me celebrate our man of God. We honor him. We honor him. We honor him. We honor First Lady Smith. We thank God for her. Amen. And, and all that she is. And certainly, uh, what can we say about Pastor Jennifer Carter? Can we give God great praise for her today? Hallelujah. Just an, an amazing gift uh, to the body of Christ. And I need you to make sure we, we, we thank God for everybody else, all of these wonderful ministers and leaders and deacons and elders here at the House of Hope, the praise team, the the musicians, everybody, the ushers, amen, the sound man, the parking lot attendants, we thank God for everybody. Uh, but, but make sure your neighbor doesn't have an attitude with me because I can't afford to preach through attitudes now. Smile at somebody you haven't been talking about this week, at least smile at somebody, amen. Some of y'all look like you were baptized in lemon juice. I need you to fix your face, amen. Smile at somebody and tell them, I'm glad you're sitting next to me today. Come on, smile, smile, y'all. Show all 32. Uh, 28, whatever's in there today, smile, tell them, hallelujah, I'm glad to see you. Grab your Bibles and go with us to the book of 2 Kings, chapter number 4. We're not going to hold you long today. 2 Kings, chapter number 4. I believe it's better when we do it together, so we're going to stand, let everybody stand. If you've got two good legs, come on, stand. If you've got one good leg, stand and lean on somebody. 2 Kings, chapter number 4. Hmm. Look at verse number 26 with me, if you will. It's in verse 26 that we find uh, these words. He says, Run now, I pray thee, to meet her. And say unto her, Is it well with thee? Is it well with thy husband? Is it well with the child? And she answered, It is Father, we thank you, we bless you, we glorify you, we celebrate you. And we ask now, before we ask you for anything, we thank you for everything. For this day you've allowed us to see, Lord, we thank you. For the power that we feel in your name, Lord, we thank you. <laughs> for the fact that last night was not our last night, we thank you. For the fact that our name was on the wake-up list today, Lord, we say thank you. We ask now that you do something that our song cannot do, do something that a dance cannot do, do something that a praise break and a click track can't do, do something that only the God of glory can do. Heal, save, deliver, make ways, throw your weight around in this place. 
and Satan, because we know you're listening anyhow, we remind you that you're still defeated. I said you're still defeated. You're trespassing in the lives of God's people. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Let every believer shout amen. Shout amen one more time. Bless you as you return to your seat. I want to just lift right out of this 26th verse uh, subject for our consideration uh, today and help me preach. I know y'all gonna help me preach. Y'all not gonna look at me uh, like I owe you money today. So help me, help me preach and just tell somebody these words. Say, neighbor, tell them it is well. Uh, make sure you got the right one. Try that other one on the other side and just tell them, say, neighbor, it is well. Brothers and sisters, saints and friends, we look here this morning at this particular passage of scripture the Bible is telling us the story of an amazing woman it's telling us the story of an amazing woman and she's in an interesting place and position in life because most of us on the outside looking in would testify that she has it made most of us on the outside looking in would testify that she's got everything that anybody could want Bible tells us that this woman is a woman of substance. She has a husband. She has a status in her community. She has servants in her home. But the Bible tells us that even with all of the good things that she has going for her, there, there's still an area of her life where she is unfulfilled. And I know that some of us would like to look and pretend today that we all have stained glass lives and that everything is the way it seems on the outside. We look together on the outside, and so therefore, we're together on the inside. You never have bad days. You never feel depressed. You never have opposition that you can't tell nobody about. But I believe I have a few real honest folks somewhere in the cathedral today that could testify that even with all of the great things God has done for you, there are some areas of unfulfillment in your life. This is her testimony because while she has a home, she has a husband, she has all of these things, the Bible tells us that she is missing a son. She does not have, she does not have a child that she has birthed that, that her and her husband can leave all that they've worked for to. She does not have the security that a son represents. And the Bible says that this woman, even though she's missing something, we see that she has great prophetic discernment. This woman... The Bible tells us and shares, shares with us here that she has enough sense, hear me now, to recognize the anointing. Yeah, she has enough sense to recognize the anointing because the Bible tells us in chapter 4, verses 9 through 10, that she notices something interesting about this, this man that keeps passing through this city, this man that we find and identify as the prophet Elijah. She sees something interesting about him and she pulls her husband aside one day and says, you know, I think we ought to make room in our home for this man. The Bible tells us right there in verse 10, it says, she tells her husband, let us make a little chamber, a room, I pray thee, in the wall, and let us set for him there a bed and a table and a stool and a candlestick, and it shall be that when he comes to us, he can stay there. In other words, number one, understand that she has enough sense, here it is, to make room for the anointing. Can I, can I tell somebody in 730 today that it is so important as we end this year, 2019, we're in the last quarter of this year, and the truth of the matter is we're not simply in the last quarter of the year, we are in the last quarter of this decade. Lord, help us here. We're getting ready to go into the roaring 20s now. Now, and it's so important. I got to tell somebody that will grab it and respond here that in this next season of your life, you've got to make room for the anointing. I need somebody to just tell that neighbor beside you, tell a neighbor, you got to make room. 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 Uh, you, you've made room for all kind of foolishness in your life. You've made room for all kind of people that are not helping you in your life. You, you got people that you've made room for that don't even like you. Y'all ain't saying nothing here. And you're trying to buy friendship and be impressive. But I want to tell you that if you make room for anybody in this season, you ought to make room for the 
see anointing. Yeah. So some, some of you, don't, 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 don't look around because it might be your neighbor, but, but some of you have lived long enough to testify and discover that, that you can't stay with everybody. Yeah, you, 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 can't, you, can't, you can't live with everybody, y'all. You, you can't roommate with everybody because some people don't know how to make you comfortable in their home. Anybody, anybody know what I'm talking about? Can you go back to your college days when you were on campus and in dorm and, and you had that roommate and you couldn't pray for that semester? Y'all ain't gonna talk to me here. Amen. You got tired of walking in the room and finding wigs drying on the dry. Y'all ain't talking to me. Amen. Stockings hanging over shower rod. Everybody is not a good roommate. And I must submit to you that sometimes I wonder how God feels trying to live in our home. How, how does he feel when he comes in and we've made no room for him? You, you've made no accommodations for him. You have no space for him. But I want to tell somebody that for where you're going, you must make room in your home for the anointing. Now, you ought to know by now that I'm not just talking about your physical address. I'm not talking about the place you're going to pull your car into when church is over and go in and cut the game on. I'm talking about the fact that your body is supposed to be the temple, y'all ain't hearing me, of the Holy Ghost. And I want to tell somebody that in this season, what God wants to do is clean you up to the point that he's got room for the anointing to make room in you. I wish somebody would just open your mouth right there and just say, Lord, make room, make room, make room. Yeah, she, she, she understands that, that there's something special about him. She makes room in our home for the anointing. And then we see something interesting. What we see, House of Hope, is that God reminds us that when we make room for him, he makes room for us. He, he shows us, he shows us. Isn't that good news for somebody this morning? That, that when you're good to God, God will be good to you. And, and as much as we can shout on that, some of y'all have the testimony. I hope I get a few real folk that even when I wasn't good to God, I'm only here because God was good to me. Hmm. Hi, yes, God, I feel something in here now. She, she makes room for him, and the prophet notices her attitude. He notices her disposition, and he inquires through his servant and says, well, because this woman has the right idea, because she's made room for the anointing, he says, what is it that we can do for her? What, what is it? What is it that we can do for her? We see that she's got servants. We see that she has a beautiful home. We see that she has status and chariots and a husband, but what what is it that she does not have? And, and I want to tell somebody that the Holy Ghost came to church today to meet you, hear me, at the point of your need. He, he came, he came. We know you look good. We know your shoes match your purse. We know that you know all the songs that we sang today, but there's still something that God wants to do. And the truth is, some of you have given up hope on it. You, you, you said, maybe I've just missed my moment. Maybe it's too late for me, but I want to tell you that God still has has time to make a way for you. He, he still got time. He still got time. He, he finds out, the prophet finds out that what she does not have is a son. She does not have a son. And then verse 16 comforts us and he says, about this season, according to the time of life, you shall embrace a son. And look at what she says now because th this is good news. The prophet now has told her that you're getting ready to have the thing that you've been waiting for. For. The prophet has told her that you're getting ready to claim and possess the thing that you've been waiting for. The prophet has given her good news. You would have thought that she would have shouted. You would have thought that she would have ran. You would have thought that she would have danced and fallen out and, you know, got real happy to the point that the ushers had to come and, and make a circle around her. Y'all don't know what I'm talking about. But, but that's not what she does because her response reveals her mindset and her history. Now, all of y'all want shout here all y'all won't say nothing here but a few real folk can understand what she says because the prophet says you're getting ready to have a son but then she says she says hold on my lord man of god she says do not lie to your handmaid 
Mm. I didn't think all of y'all would say that there because some of y'all want to act like every time God has told you something, you just stood up and said, yea, Lord, verily, I receive your promise. But are there any real folk in here that can identify with this woman and say, hold on, hold on, hold on. Here it is. Before you give me a new prophecy, I need these last five words to come to pass. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me in here today. Is there anybody in here real enough to say, I don't need nobody else to call my name? I don't need nobody to pull me aside in the parking lot and tell me, yea, verily, I say unto thee, I don't need you to dim the lights. I don't need to hear no strings. I don't need a new prophetic word for the new year. Few of y'all in here can say, God, I would be happy if these last words came to pass. If you, if you would just do what you told me last year, I'd be all right. If you, if you would say, my child, that I'm still praying about it, that y'all told me at this church that God was going to save my family, I'd be all right. Is there anybody in here that can say I got enough to lay prophecies over my life that I could shout right now just for what you said you would do yesterday I wish I had some real folk in here. She, she, she says, hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. I know you're the man of God. I know you're the prophet. I know, I know that you saying what the Lord said. But, but she says in so many words, she says, don't play with me. Don't, 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 don't waste my time. I don't, I don't have the emotional energy to get invested in another word. I don't have, I don't have, I don't have the faith. I'm already on life support spiritually. I don't have, I don't have another moment to waste wondering if God is going to do what he said and I don't know I don't know it might be you it might be your neighbor but there, there's somebody in here that feels just how this woman felt you're, you're saying God I'm here I'm holding on by a friend God if this thing don't come through I, I don't know if I can take another letdown I don't know if I can take another loss I don't know if I can take another disappointment but can I tell you that you showed up in this service so that the young preacher could tell you right now that what you got to remember and stand on is this right here God is not a man that he should lie and if he said it hmm, I need about 50 of y'all just to go off in praise right now because if he said it it's already done why don't you just have found somebody beside you and tell a neighbor God said it's already done Mm. Oh no, I need you to say it till faith comes alive. Tell, tell, tell somebody in your neighborhood, tell them it don't look like it, it don't feel like it, it doesn't sound like it's gonna get better. But tell them God ain't lied to me yet. He may come late, but he's always on time. Yes, God. Uh, yeah, yes, God. Don't, don't, don't lie to me. Don't, don't, don't lie to me. Don't, don't lie to me. That, that's what she says. That's what she says. Some of y'all want to act so bold and bougie today that, that you ain't never been in that place. But some of y'all right now are in that place where you're telling God, God, uh, God, please, not now. Don't, I can't take it. I can't take it. I need, I need you to do what you said you were going to do. I, I, you, you told me, you told me, this is for half of y'all in here. God, you told me there was some stuff you were going to do in 29. And I don't know if you know, but we at the end of October. But can I tell somebody that even in the fourth quarter, you got enough time on the clock for a comeback? Mm, I feel that in my spirit right here. He, he, he says, he says, no, 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 Derek, no, no, no. He, he says, no, hold on. I know, I know you've had some letdown. I know you've gotten close and fallen through before. But, but, but he says, I, I'm not playing with you. I'm not playing with you. You are going to have a son. Time goes forward. The man of God leaves. And we see something good here. We see, we see that what God said comes to pass. She conceives a child. She gives birth to a little boy. And we hit fast forward on the text and go years into the future. And what we see here now, yes, God, is something interesting. Because remember now that she wanted a son. Hear me. Because in this culture and context, a son guaranteed that a legacy could be left. A son guaranteed that there would be somebody to take this 
family into the future. You got to remember that there was no retirement plan. Your son was your retirement plan. There, that there was, there was no, there was no, there was no government agency to ensure that they were all right. Their son was their security. And I got to tell some of y'all in here that this is why you got to understand that what you're going through is bigger than you. But some of you need to understand that the attack that you're going through is an attack on your legacy. Some of y'all, thank you, Holy Ghost, are so stuck on the legacy that you inherited that you're not thinking about the legacy God wants you to leave. Hmm. Some of you are looking and all you sin and spend time on is what the Johnsons used to be and what the Taylors used to be and what the what the what the what the favors used to be. But at some point you gotta look at your legacy and say, I don't care what we were. I know, I know you look good, but come on, you got some crackheads in your family too. Don't don't play. Don't don't play. You got some folk with some family when they come over, you gotta lock the good stuff up. Y'all ain't here with me in here. You, you, you know good well, you you got some you got some drug addicts in the family you got some liars you got some you got some foolishness that you don't tell everybody about but can I get a handful of y'all that can celebrate because even though you might not have come from a godly legacy you can declare that a godly legacy is coming from me Mm. Uh, yeah, yeah, legacy moves, legacy moves. She has this son years go by, but look at verse number 18. The boy, some scholars suggest, is around 16 years old now. The Bible says in verse 18, look at it, that when the child was grown, it fell on a day that he went out to his father, to the reapers, and said to his father, my head, my head. And he said to a lad, take him in to his mother. Verse 20 he says that when he had taken him and brought him to his mother he sat on her knees until noon and then he died I need you to look at what just happened because this is this is a major moment in the story this is a major moment in the text here this is a major moment because what we see here is that her son dying was symbolic not only of the death of her promise from God but again stay with me now it was symbolic of the death of her legacy it was symbolic of the death of her household it was symbolic of the death of her future notice when it happens though it does not say that as the child is going from his sixth to ninth month as the child is going from infant to toddler from from toddler to small child it does not say that he runs into an issue but it says here it is that when he was grown yeah when when the promise is now reaching a point of maturity look 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 at what the boy is doing it says uh, that it fell on the day here it is when he's going outside to help his father many scholars suggest that the boy experiences a heat stroke I gotta gotta pause and preach to somebody here and tell you that you cannot just read over the significance of this moment no you, you cannot read over the significance of this because uh, notice that it is not until the promise is about to be productive that it runs into an issue. Let me let me come down your road. Does not say that he has a heat stroke playing outside in kindergarten. Doesn't say that he has a heat stroke outside during middle school field day. But but the moment that the promise reaches a point of maturity, yeah, the moment that the promise is now in position to go to work, y'all in here. The moment that the promise is now in position to begin to pay off now the promise has a heat stroke and I tell somebody in here that you ought to go off giving God praise in this season because you know that you are close to your promise becoming productive not because you got followers on Instagram not because everybody's telling you how wonderful you are but some of you need to know that you are close to your promise because now that you're about to pay off now things want to get hot now now things want to get shaky now folks want to turn on you now things want to go crazy but then I get somebody to just touch your neighbor and tell them neighbor whatever you do in this season tell them say neighbor just don't stroke out 
<laughs> you ain't got the right neighbor. They ain't talking to you good. Talk to somebody else like you at the 730 service and tell them, say, neighbor, the devil wants you to throw the towel in. Tell them, tell them, tell them. The devil wants you to quit. He wants you to backslide. He wants you to quit, quiet, throw the towel in, leave. Leave your assignment. Leave your family. Leave your post. Leave your business. Leave your future. But tell them, neighbor, whatever you do, tell them, don't show out. Don't, 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 no, 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 no. You got to get that in the spirit. Tell them you're too close to turn around now. You, I know it's getting hot in your life. I know that the pressure is intensifying, but tell them, neighbor, please don't stroke out. Don't, don't, don't stroke out. And I wonder, do I have any real folk in here that can just open your mouth and celebrate? Because after all you've been through, after all the reasons that life gave you to quit, you still holding on. Can you shout? Because you ain't got all the money but you're holding on folk don't like you but you're holding on you got pain in your body but you're holding on Ah, yes, God, I'm holding, I'm holding on. He he reaches a point of maturity. I gotta let y'all go. Y'all got brunch plans and whatnot. He reaches a place of maturity. And then the boy strokes out. He goes into the house, lays on his mother's lap, and then the boy dies. Ah, can you imagine the grief that this woman has to be feeling right now? Can you imagine that she's waited on this promise all this time? and now her promise seems to be dead the Bible the Bible says that I like her response look at what she does she says I'm not gonna cry I'm not gonna worry but she takes him and puts him in the room ha, that she made for the prophet God help me here in other words she puts him in the place that she designated for the anointing she she says I know how to fix this she says I know how to handle this she goes and tells her husband she she says, I need you to saddle up the donkey because I, I gotta go see. I gotta go see the prophet. Now, look at what a husband does because some of y'all, you got people in your family just like this. Some of y'all, you got people on your friends list just like this. Some of y'all, right now, you might have people on your road just like this. The husband looks at her in verse 23 and said, why are you going today? He says, it's not new moon. It's not Sabbath. It's not first Sunday. Uh, it's not Christmas. It's not Mother's Day. Uh, why are you going to the prophet now? Why? Why are you going to where the anointing is now? Why? Why? Why are you praying more now? Some of y'all have been in this place. Why? Why are you trying to live better now? Who do you think you are? What, what's going on? Why are you trying to do right now? You ain't even waiting on a doctor's report to come back. Why? Why are you trying to act right now? I, I like what she says because she simply says these words and the few of y'all that got the Holy Ghost right here you'll shout because what she says is it shall be well Hmm. Y'all didn't hear what I said. I, I, I noticed, notice, notice that she does not go into an explanation. She does not go in trying to justify her decision because she shows us a lesson that we ought to claim today. Here it is. You don't have time to go back and forth explaining yourself to folk that can't do nothing about the situation. No, I... Uh, yeah, can I tell you? Let me set somebody free today. You no longer have to explain your praise to folk uh, that can't answer what it is you praising God for. You ain't got to justify your prayer life to nobody. You ain't got to explain why you walking with God for real, for real. You ain't got to explain why you don't have one foot in and one foot out no more. All you got to do in this season is tell folk uh, all you need to know is that it shall be well. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how God's going to do it, but it shall be well. Just look up and down your own. Release that word over them. Tell them, neighbor, God said that it shall be well. Oh, you ain't got the right neighbor. Come on, look at somebody with faith and tell them, say, neighbor, I don't care what it looks like right now. Tell them, 
Bible say it shall be well. I wish I had somebody that would just open up your mouth and praise God right here. Like you know that it shall be well. I got to get ready to leave y'all here now. But the Bible, the Bible, the Bible says how that she goes and gets on the donkey and goes to the man of God in Mount Carmel. Musicians, we got to go home now. But she goes, she goes to where the man of God is. And the Bible says that the man of God saw her from the top of the mountain afar off. And he said to his servant Gehazi, he said, behold, there goes the Shunammite woman. And he said, go down and ask her. He says, is it well with thy husband? Is it well with the child? Is it well with you? And so the servant goes down and he speaks to the woman in the road and said, it's so good. It's so good to see you here. He said, I want to know, is it well with you? He said, I want to know, is it well with your husband? He said, I want to know, is it well with your child? And for the praises in the house of hope today, I want you to see what she says. She says, it is well. Hold on just a minute. I got a problem here now because the situation has not changed. The boy is still dead. And it was just a few verses ago that she said it shall be well. But now her confession has changed. And she dropped the shell and said it is. I need you to help me preach now. Why don't you just lean over and grab your neighbor by the hand and say, oh neighbor, say you gotta know that the closer you get to where the anointing is, say God is going to change your confession from shall be to an is. Grab your neighbor's hand, shake him just a little bit, and say, neighbor, I don't know about you, but say all week long, I've had some shall be's in my life. I told myself, I shall be healed. I told myself, I shall come through. I told myself, my child shall be saved. But say, neighbor, now that I'm here today, I want the devil to know that I'm changing my confession. I'm no longer saying it shall be, but I declare that it is right now. says to him it shall be well when she leaves the house but now that she's at the mountain she tells a servant that it is well she goes on past him and goes to the prophet and you gotta be real here she looks at the prophet and says prophet I told you not to play with me she said prophet I told you not to waste my time she said prophet I told you don't to play with me but he says it's all right he says what I'm gonna do is send my servant and my servant can pray for your servant but look at what the woman does she said no 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 I don't want no servant she says I wanted you to go because the servant didn't make me the promise and she said I want the promise maker to go home with me I gotta leave you all here but can I tell you you wanna make up your mind but I'm not leaving here until the promise maker goes home with me I love my 
a man there was a man by the name of Horatio Spafford he had a wife named Anna he had four sons four daughters and one son his son died in the great Chicago fire 1860s another child died scarlet fever he lost his business in that same Chicago fire in 1871. He got his wife and his daughters together. 
Say, we need a break. We need, we need to do something different. We're going to plan a European vacation. It's 1800s. There were no commercial flights. He takes his family from Chicago to New York. They get on a boat. We set to go from New York City to London. At the last minute, there's something pressing. We we'll have to get on the next one. So he sends his family ahead of him. On the way from New York to London, the ship that they're on is struck by an iron vessel. The boat sinks. His wife and his three daughters die. Word gets back to Mr. Spafford. Learns of the death of his family and he sits down at his desk and he picks up his pen. He writes these words. He says, when peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, he says, whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to say, it is well. It is well with my soul. I came and covered somebody and tell you, I don't know what it is you're going through now. But this woman showed up to church and tell you that if God made you a promise, it's a real simple message that if God made you a promise, you can stand flat foot, you can square your shoulders, and you can tell the devil, I don't care what it looks like, I'm declaring that it is well. Number one, she makes room in her house for the anointing. Your challenge in this season is to make room for the anointing. You got you to you clear some boxes of gossip out. You, you got to move some boxes of unforgiveness. And, yeah, you you, you got to let some of that go, but make room for the anointing. You got to let, let, let your lust go. Let, make some room, make some room, make some room. Let that unhealthy relationship go. Make some room. But she makes room for the anointing. And because she made room for him, the anointing made room for her. What do you want? I want a son. The Bible says she, she, she's reluctant, but she claims it. She gets her promise. Hear me. The moment the promise reaches maturity, that's when the enemy attacks it. I want to encourage somebody. I'm getting ready to walk off this pulpit. But I want to encourage somebody. You ought to know that your promise is about to be mature because now it's facing attacks. Oh yeah, when your business plan was small, folks just laughed at it. They didn't care nothing about it. But now that it's about to take off, now you got, now you got issues. Reaches the point of maturity, then the attack comes. Dies, she goes back to the promise maker. Servant stops and says, is everything all right? She says, again, just like with my husband, I ain't got time to explain things to you. All you need to know is that it is well. Now at the house, she said it shall be well. But now that she's closer to where the anointing is, her shall be has changed into an is. Can I tell you, that's why some of y'all, the devil fought you to even get to church today. That's why, that's why sometimes you gotta, you gotta press just to get here. Because the devil knows that if you can just get to where the anointing is, your confession will change. You'll go from I'm not gonna make it to I will make it. You'll go from I ain't getting out of this to I'm already out of this. Your confession will change. She gets to where the anointing is and she tells the prophet, no, you ain't sending me home with, 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 a, with an armor bearer. Because they didn't make me the promise. She said, I want the promise maker to go home with me. Because here it is, because you made the promise, you're responsible to fix it. I want to tell somebody that the promise maker is here right now. It doesn't matter what's broken, doesn't matter what seems to be going wrong. If he made you the promise, God is obligated to fix it. Join hands with that neighbor. We're getting ready to go. Squeeze life into that hand. Pastor Connor's getting ready to come. Doors of the church are about to be open. The invitation's about to be made. Hmm. Tendeth my way When sorrows Like sea pillows roll Whatever my life thou hast taught 
me to sing. Confess this. It is well. Squeeze life into that hand. It is well with my soul. Just sing that one time in this house. Come on, say, it is well. It is well, say, it is. If you're here today and you need prayer, with my soul. I want you to get ready to come. Come on, one more time. Say, it is well, say, it is well. Say it again. It is well. Come on, sing it like you believe it in your spirit this morning. It with my soul. It is well. It is with my soul. Listen, listen. After a word like that, there may be someone here this morning who is saying, you know what, I want to have a closer relationship with the Lord. I want to be in position to be able to ask and to be able to stand on his promises. And so if you're here this morning and you're, you're not affiliated with a local church, you don't have a church home, we want to extend an invitation to Christian discipleship. This is a wonderful church with a wonderful senior pastor and wonderful ministries that you can be a part of. If you're here and you want to give your life to Christ, we extend the invitation. It is well. If you're here and you don't have a church home, we extend the invitation. With my soul. Come on, if you hear the Lord speaking, we're waiting on you. I see you. I knew you were here. It is well. Come on, there may be another who's saying, I want to be closer to the Lord this morning. Say it. Soul. If you hear the Lord speak and say, yeah. we're waiting on you, it is well. Listen, you may be here and you have a relationship with the Lord, but you're disconnected. You're, you're not where you should be and you want to rededicate your life. Listen, this is a wonderful day in this final quarter of the year. Wonderful day to rededicate your life to Christ. If you want to reconnect with God, we extend an invitation for you to come. We'll wait on you. This is the most important part of what we do. If you're here and you wanna reunite with the household of faith and reunite with God, we extend an invitation for you to come. One more time, we're gonna sing it again. We're waiting just for you. Say it as well. We're waiting just for you. If you hear the Lord speaking with my soul, It is well. Now listen, family, if you receive that word today, will you put your hands together and give God praise for the tremendous ministry gift of Elder Mark Moore? Come on, we can do better than that. Come on, come on, come on. Let's give God praise for what our eyes have heard, eyes have seen, and our ears have heard. You can have your seats really quickly. It's giving time. And I don't know about you, but I get excited when they say it's giving time because I know I have seeds in the ground. So come on, family. Can we get excited about giving time? Oh, y'all can do better than that. It's giving time. Listen, it's time for us to give unto the Lord as he has prospered us. And we know we have so many exciting projects and exciting activities going on here at the House of Hope. And your gifts allow us to be able to do the work of ministry. We want to thank God for our finance department, um, all of those who give leadership to our accounting and finance. They're doing an amazing job keeping us fiscally fit. Let's give God praise for all of them. We thank God for them. And at this time, we want to worship the Lord in our giving. Amen, amen, amen. Our deacons are going to lead us in this time of giving. Praise team, feel free to sing a song that will guide us and, and that will, will take us on through. How many of you just enjoying the presence of the Lord this morning? He met us here. He met us here. Amen. Powerful word. It is well with my soul. Make room for the anointing. Y'all, I could sit on that all week long. What in your life needs to move out of the way? 
so that God can have prominence, so that God can have center stage in your life. Amen. A couple of quick announcements. We want to continue in prayer for Deacon Lavelle Thornton, um, Dr. Areva Thornton's father, Mr. James E. Thornton, transitioned home to be with the Lord, and we definitely want to be in prayer for that family. The, transition, the celebration of life was actually this past Saturday, and so we want to continue in prayer for them. Ms. Weta Williams' son and Mr. Calvin Blunt's nephew, Mr. Lazaro M. Williams, transitioned home to be with the Lord. And the celebration of life was this past week also, so we want to be in prayer for them. And Miss Cat Carmen Sorry transitioned home to be with the Lord, so we want to be in prayer for the Sorry family. Amen. Amen. Our Life You is back. And so if you have not, come on, we can give God praise for Life You. That's where we get discipled and we begin to learn and continue to go deeper in the word of the Lord. If you are not in a Life You class, we need you to register today after worship and get in a life group because the life group is where you get your accountability. Y'all ain't saying nothing. You need some cheerleaders and truth tellers in your life. You need some people to hold you accountable. And so if you're not in a life group, please ma'am, please sir, do that. And also this coming Wednesday, uh, the first Wednesday of each month, we will have prayer um, and that's gonna be before our evening Bible study. So um, let's govern ourselves accordingly and plan to be present for our hour of prayer, which precedes our evening Bible study. That's going to be the first Wednesday of every month. Amen, 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 amen. We want to continue in our period of giving. I don't know about you, but I love worshiping God with, with my gifts because I know I can't be God's giving no matter how hard I try. Come on, somebody. Anybody know when you so, when you so generously, God meets you at the point of your need? If everyone is given, let us all stand as we prepare to leave this place, but never from God's presence. I want you to grab the hand of that neighbor and look them in the eyes. Look them in the eye and tell them it is well. Come on, encourage them. Tell them, I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what it seems like. I don't care what the enemy told you. It is well this morning. Hallelujah. Let's go to God in prayer. Father, we love you. We thank you that you love us so much that you met us here this morning. You met us here and you fed us with your word, Lord. And our hearts are overflowing with gladness and, and just gratefulness. Lord, we just want to thank you for your word because your word gives us life. Your word gives us power to meet every challenge and every test. And so right now, this word that has been planted in our hearts, we're asking that you would water it this week and that it will grow grow much fruit. Let us face each and every dilemma this week with an attitude of confidence and courage, knowing that it's already done. It is already well because you are the God who can do exceedingly and abundantly and above all that we can ask or think. And so as we leave this place, go with us, protect us, guide us, wrap your loving arms around us so that when we meet together again, all will be well. We ask all these things in the name of he that is he that was and he that is to come in the powerful and precious name of Jesus we pray amen and it is so love you family have a great week love you have a great week we love you